I'm about to travel on the world's steepest cable-driven railway. I'm here in the Blue Mountains and I'm not sure if I'm excited or nervous. This thing has a 52 degree incline. Oh! That was so steep, and it's given me an idea for my next collage. I'm in the most beautiful location to start our mountain collage. So what you'll need is something round to trace around, some glitter paper, coloured cardboard, watercolour paper, some paint, ink, some water, crayons, glue, paint brushes, scissors, and a pencil. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is trace out a really big circle, and this is going to be the background of our collage. So I've just got a placemat. You could use a saucepan or a pot or something at home. And all I'm going to do is flip my card over to the non-coloured side. Grab your pencil and just trace around the circle. Easy. Now I'll grab my scissors, cut it out. And there we have our background ready. I've been inspired by the landscape of the Blue Mountains. So this bit's really, really easy. I'm not really using any special technique. I'm just adding a fair bit of water to my brush and then thinning out my paint just a little bit and kind of just splashing it onto my page. I think it gives your artwork a little bit of individuality when you mix your colours. So I'm adding a lot of water to my brush here. I always go water, paint, water. Okay, that's my last one done. I'm gonna set them aside to dry. All right, so these are all nice and dry now. I'm going to add some really simple patterns using some oil crayons. If you don't have oil crayons, you could just use a marker, whatever you like. I'm going to add some really, really simple patterns. So with your crayons, use contrasting colours to your watercolours. That way, the pattern will really stand out. So just go all the way to the top of your page. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my scissors and cut out some triangles. And these are going to be our really steep mountains that we saw earlier. cutting up and down like a zigzag sort of pattern. They don't all have to be exactly the same. Actually, they look better if they're not all the same. So now I'm cutting some small mountains out of some glitter paper. I haven't added a pattern or anything to this because I think it's pretty enough as it is. And this just adds a bit of texture to your artwork. I'll just do a few, maybe some long, skinny gold mountains. And then I think we're about covered for our mountains. Okay, so we've got all of our different shapes, sizes and colours for our mountains. And now it's time to start arranging them on our background. Grab the circle that you cut earlier. It's here. Now what I'm going to do is grab some of my mountains and I'm going to start arranging them from the middle and down. 
Now we're just going to start gluing. I'm just going to stick down my colours where I think they look the best. So I do it kind of, some are higher than others. You do need quite a bit of glue for this project because the watercolour paper is really thick. Okay, so now it's time to cut off the excess. So just turn it over and that's going to give you a really good outline to cut around. And then I just go and cut all the extra overhanging bits off. Okay, all done. So I'm going to set this aside to dry and put some books on top of it so that it makes it nice and flat. In ancient times, salt was considered more valuable than gold. These tiny granules are capable of so many things, such as creating amazing designs in your paintings. Today I'm going to make a salt watercolour tin can. You are going to want to try this at home. What you will need is watercolour paper, a paintbrush, watercolour paint, scissors, glue, water, a tin can and of course salt. Oh, and also a rubber band. Now to start off, I'm just going to dampen my sheet of watercolour paper. And now I'm going to paint. So I'm just going to add a bit more water onto my paintbrush and then mix that in with the colour of paint that you want to use. I'm going to use blue today. And then just paint onto the paper Nice, wide, even brush strokes. Keep painting until you get the consistency that you desire. It's best to use one solid colour or two complementary colours in order to get a bolder effect. So once you're happy with the coverage, you can then grab a pinch of salt and then lightly sprinkle it onto your piece of paper separating each granule of salt. Remember, less is more. This will create a really cool mottled effect. So it'll become all spotty. So once you've sprinkled your salt, just leave it aside to dry. All right, so now that it's dry, I'm just gonna brush off the salt. And now I'm going to fold my piece in half, then unfold, and then grab your scissors and cut across the line. Okay, now I'm done cutting. I'm gonna use this strip and mold it around my can. This is just to loosen the fibres of the paper so it makes it easier to stick on to later. Now, I'm just gonna grab my glue and then do a strip of glue on the can like this. Then grab my piece of paper and then just mold it around, wrapping it quite tightly around the can. And then before the end finishes, I'm just going to paste another strip of glue onto the piece of paper. And now paste it on. So I'm gonna grab my rubber band to tie it around so it all binds together. Now we just have to let it dry for an hour. And now that it's dry, I'm gonna take off this rubber band and there you have your very own salt water coloured tin can, which I'm going to use as a pencil holder. Millinery is a uh the making of a hat. 
and uh, it could be anything from a sort of soft fabric hat to a, a more elaborate sort of um, theatrical piece. The tools of the trade that I use every day is a um, sewing machine, wire cutters, a hammer, nails, all the things that you find in a garage you um, use in the millinery department. And I have a steamer that I use to steam, felt and pull over a hat block. They're all different shapes and sizes. Heat up the felt or a buckram fabric and then drape it over this and pull it down really, really tight using wire and steam and a hammer. When it dries, it sort of lifts off and it's that shape. Why do I make hats and why hat making? I just love it. I, I think it's a fun thing to do. I first learned how to sew when I was about 30. I couldn't hem a pair of trousers and I had to pay someone to do that. I thought, no, this is crazy. So I enrolled in a basic TAFE course and I learned to sew, but loved it. I just thought this is the best thing I've ever done. And I went to every single class that I could. And the last class I did was millinery or hat making. So I was able to sort of put all the skills together that I'd learned into one topic. And it was the best decision of my life. Went to see uh, Phantom of the Opera, just loved theatre. I thought, no matter what I do, I've got to be part of that scene. It's just magical, just really, really magical. And making hats for theatre was just, just an ultimate dream, really. And many hats later, I started um, making hats for theatre and film and musicals. The first time I saw my work or my hats on stage, it was such a thrill. I just loved that. It just came alive. And on stage with the lights on there and the, and the sort of buzziness about it, it was just the greatest feeling. I've been doing it now for over 20 years and I just recently I've just finished working on Aladdin, the musical. I work with a designer and they give me the drawing and that's the first step. So I sort of modify it as I go along. And if I'm working for myself, I, I do the same thing. I sort of sketch little designs and put it all together and, and then go from there. Usually when you're filming, sometimes you don't even see the outfit, but you will see the face and the hat. And that just sort of just creates the whole look. I tend to sort of work with the costume in mind, but it finishes and it complements the costume. I've seen people that put on hats like these and they just sort of go into character straight away. The best advice I was ever given is always do your best. Always make a hat as if it's going to be a royalty. No matter who it's for or where it's going, you just do your best. I'd encourage kids to sort of look at the kitchen cupboards, really. You've got beautiful pots and pans and nature as well. You've got shells and butterflies and even a lizard's head. This is how to be my craziest hat that I've made. It's a look at me hat, definitely. I made it for an exhibition, so I, I sort of made it look like a motorbike because it's a fun thing to do, uh, along with the goggles and the light. The light was from a, a, a light bulb. It just fell from the ceiling one day and I put it in. It sort of changes the personality. As soon as you put it on, you feel tough because it looks like a tough hat. If I ever make a mistake, it doesn't really matter. I love making mistakes. And you just um, change and alter and sometimes you get something completely different. And uh, I'll try it on for you. This is sort of like a crazy hat. <laughs> I'm Christine Thompson, I'm a milliner, and a milliner creates and designs hats. Today we're going to be making our very own kimono. Here's what you'll need. Paper, scissors, fabric pen, pins, measuring tape, fabric. I've used a nice stretchy fabric because it drapes real nicely for a kimono. And a sewing machine. Our first step is to measure ourselves. To do this, we're gonna grab our measuring tape and measure from our shoulder down to our hips. I've already measured mine and it's 72 centimetres. Double that measurement and that's how much fabric you need. So our next step is to lay out our fabric. Now I'm doing this 
because we want to cut out our kimono pattern. We're going to fold our fabric in half and lay it out nice and smoothly. It's going to help for our cutting. We're going to grab our A4 pieces of paper, place one on the left bottom and one on the right bottom. This is where we're going to cut out our armholes. We're now going to grab our other pieces of A4 paper and fold them in half. And then we're going to place these above the A4 pieces of paper that we put down before on both sides. Going to pin that in place now. Now that that's pinned in place, we're going to grab our scissors. We're going to cut exactly where we've just pinned. So we're going to cut around the pieces of paper. Now we've got our basic kimono shape, we're going to pin where we just cut. This will keep in place while we're sewing around. Now that we've pinned that in place, we're going to sew exactly where we just pinned. Because I've chosen a stretchy fabric, I need to use a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. This will just to help it allow it to stretch with the fabric. Remembering to take the pins out while you sew. And a back stitch at the start and at the end of the sewing. Just fitting it through nice and slowly. Be careful of your fingers. Now we're approaching the edge of the armpit now. Just keep feeding it through slowly and following the edge of the fabric. And now we're going to repeat the exact same thing on the other side of the kimono. All done. Now we can just spread out our kimono so there's no creases in it. We're now going to fold it in half, matching all the edges. Then with your fabric pen, we're just going to mark down on this fold. The best thing about a fabric pen is, after a few moments, it disappears. So I can cut out this line and not have to worry about rubbing it out. Okay, now it's just time to straighten up the edges a little bit. So any little rough bits which have happened throughout our sewing, we're just going to cut them off. Okay, we're all done. Now we just need to turn it right side in. And we've got our kimono ready to wear whenever you want. Can you believe I made this bowl out of confetti? It's really, really easy. All you need is a paintbrush, some craft glue, a balloon, confetti, and masking tape. First step is attach your balloon to your cup. Just gonna peel off some masking tape here. Just two pieces. Pop your balloon in. Just stick it down. Now grab your paintbrush, dip it in the craft glue. We're going to paint two thirds of the bloom with a good layer of glue. Now I'm going to dip my balloon into the confetti. Just rolling it around, trying to get as much confetti as you can. And just sprinkle over where you've missed. Now this dries pretty quick. Just tap off any excess, put it down to dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. Clean up and do it all over again. So 
say three. Stay four. Take five. Okay, take 10. When you think you have enough layers, just one last layer of glue to seal it in and let it dry. 11 layers later and it's all dry. We're ready to pop our balloon. Now we're going to grab a pencil and pierce the balloon where we've tied it off. And now peel your balloon out. You may need to trim the edges, just to neaten it up. But apart from that, your confetti bowl is done. How easy was that? <laughs>